My boss says work project is stupid, so I quit. But the company fires my boss so they can keep me. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. Back in the day, I worked as an independent IT consultant and was hired along with another independent to subcontract on a team for a major consulting house. We'll just refer to it as consulting house. Everyone else on the team was a consulting house employee. The two of us were not supposed to tell the client that we weren't part of the consulting house, but the client figured it out pretty fast because we independents were doing most of the work. While consulting house's code monkeys were busy filling out spreadsheets all day and going on team building exercises, but I digress. The project ran past its initial deadline, and my contract expired. I stayed on a week-to-week -week basis as a professional courtesy to get the project finished, because I liked the client, if not the team. Unfortunately, the consulting house project manager was booked somewhere else for his next gig, and they brought in a new guy to replace him. Let's call him David Stress. David flew in on a Monday morning to get the project handed off to him, and immediately started crapping on everything to mark his territory. He was derogatory and belittling to the team, and liked to raise his voice. I was working in my office, well, actually a closet with folding tables that I shared with three other team members, and didn't hear what he was saying out in the main room, but I could sure hear his tone. Then he burst in and demanded, how are we doing specific payroll related conversion task? I said, we're using program X. He waved his hand dismissively and scoffed. Well, that's stupid. Program X won't work for this. You need to do something else. The other indie was in the room at the time, and she saw me coming up out of my chair. She later told me she thought I was going to deck him. I knew he was full of crap because I wrote Program X. It was custom code for this project, and he had no way of knowing what it would or wouldn't do. He was just trying to bully me and be the alpha dog. I did not in fact deck him. Instead, I went to the client's payroll manager, with whom I'd been working closely for months, and who was driving the client side of the project. I laid it on the line. I said, look, I know you know I don't work for Consulting House. I'm here on an independent contract. That contract is up and I've been working here week to week just to get you guys through. She told me she was aware of this. Okay, this new guy, David Stress, is a bully and a blowhard, and I'm not going to work with him. I have no contract at this point, and with him running the project, I won't be back next week. I'm not asking you to do anything specific about it, I'm just letting you know as a courtesy so you can plan to transition my work to someone else. She sat back in her chair, thought a moment, and said, Okay, thanks for letting me know. Two hours later, David Stress was removed from his new position. The payroll manager, faced with losing the one technical guy on the team who actually knew what was going on with a very complicated payroll system, called Consulting House and said, We don't want this new guy. Take him away. Consulting House rearranged some things to keep the original project manager with the project. The funniest part of the whole thing was that Consulting House had scheduled a welcome day dinner for David at a posh steakhouse that evening. Rather than create the further embarrassment of canceling the dinner, they actually went ahead with it as a farewell dinner for David, who had been on the project for less than one day. It was fun to watch the jerk try and put on a brave face for that. I did stay on with the project until the end after that, and it went through successfully. I don't know why when there's a change in management, they feel the need to do this. They gotta change everything up just to show that they're in charge and you have to listen to them. I get that everyone has a preferred way of doing things, but sometimes you gotta just roll with the punches. In this case, you're just finishing up a project that's already been on the go for however long. It's not really your responsibility to come in and start making all these decisions. You just need to make sure things continue to move along smoothly and get to the end. Being a jerk along the way isn't going to help you at all. We're only closed two days a year and still have problem with snobby entitled people. A couple years ago, before I changed departments and went to gas station, I was a cashier at a local grocery chain. I had the misfortune of working Christmas Eve. Luckily, I worked in the morning and was out by noon. I'm working the till and that Christmas Eve morning, it was actually raining and cold. No snow. It doesn't snow where I live. I was near the exit, so I would constantly get a breeze of cold, wet air. I had been working the past four days so I could get the following week off and be able to hang out New Year's Eve. Things were going smooth when I had my first difficult customer of the day. Snobby lady, we'll call her. Hello, find everything all right? 
Yes, yes, I'm dead. It's nice and cold outside, but I'm not liking the rain. Yes, it is, and me neither. Hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow on Christmas Day. I know. I'm going to come early to try and get some more things for lunch and dinner for my family tomorrow. Now, just a note, we're closed Christmas Day. We always have been. We have signs on every single cash register stating we're closed and will open the following day. Oh, well, you should get those items right now or later today. We're going to be closed tomorrow. It's Christmas Day. Oh, no, I'll just come tomorrow. We're closed tomorrow. What do you mean you're closed tomorrow? It's Christmas Day. I have things I need to buy. And I have a family I'd like to be at home with and spend my day with. If you have things you need to buy, do so now. I need to speak to your manager now. At this point, I was like, great. I shouldn't have said that. My manager shows up to speak to her. Uh, yes, ma'am. How can I help you? Your employee, original poster, while looking at my name tag, said you're closed tomorrow. I demand this store be open. I have things to buy and I'm the customer. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we have signs posted all over the store stating we're closed and the signs have been up for over two weeks now. I suggest you buy what you need now. She was quite taken aback at this response. I know the store manager here, and I'll make sure you and Original Poster get fired for turning away a customer. If you'd like to speak to him, he's actually right there. I will. Enjoy being jobless on Christmas. She left and went immediately to speak to him. He paid little to no attention to her and asked her to leave the store if she was going to continue to harass him and his employees. That store manager had probably never stood up for his employees. He usually does what the customer wants, even though it's against corporate policy, but apparently not for this jerk. I'm sorry, it's Christmas Day. You gotta give people a break. They want to spend time with their families, like the original poster said. To sit there and think that you can demand that the store be open and fully staffed so that you can come in, when everyone else is probably going to be at home with their families and understands that everything's going to be closed and they should have gotten their stuff earlier, is incredibly entitled of you. That's really putting yourself up on a pedestal thinking that everyone should give up the time with their family so that you can come in and shop that day. You're literally in the store right now. Get what you want and leave. And do us all a favor and don't come back. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. New manager fires me without realizing I'm the only one that can operate the forklift. I report them to OSHA and they lose three weeks of profit as a result. I worked at a retail chain that sold pet supplies and products. When I started working there, it was great. Family owned and everyone I worked with was fantastic. The owners eventually wanted to retire and sold the small chain to an investment group. Once the investment group took over, almost all but a few employees were let go, forced out, or just quit. I held on a little while longer before I got promoted at my other job. The new company brings in a new manager to my store. My store was the top performing store in the entire chain, bringing in about 10,000 to 12,000 a day on average. It was always more on weekends and especially around the holidays. The new manager is a Mr. Company man. Company told him they only want employees around for two to three years. Myself and two others had been there 10 plus years. So naturally, he began ruffling feathers and giving us all a hard time. Unfortunately, he decided on me first. Mr. Company found out I worked two jobs. The two jobs are not in related fields, so there was no chance of any conflicts of interest on my end. However, my second job requires me to work nights and weekends. When Mr. Company Man found this out, he demanded I work nights and weekends there. So it was fair for everyone. I didn't work nights and weekends there because I was that store's only OSHA certified forklift operator. And deliveries didn't come at night. They came weekday mornings, every day. Mr. Company Man didn't want to hear that and told me I either had to work nights and weekends or that day would be my last day. I told him, don't threaten me with a good time. I suppose today's my last day then. I was pretty ticked off about that, but it's not a big deal now. Ended up being the greatest thing that 
that ever happened to me. I went home early. I didn't end up finishing my shift because screw them. But when I got home, I decided to call my local OSHA inspector and report them for not having a certified operator on staff, as well as numerous other hazards. Needless to say, they lost close to three weeks profit from all the violations the inspector found. I was surprised they even showed up. In my state, the inspector will call you back after an inspection and tell you if your claims were founded or not. Mine were. And Mr. Company Man got his butt chewed out so bad that he ended up quitting. What kind of company doesn't want to keep around their seasoned employees? They're just trying to get a bunch of kids in, I guess, and rotate them out quickly. That way they don't have to pay them benefits or make them full time or something. I don't know. Either way, they're trying to save a buck. And clearly it wasn't worth it. They ended up losing three weeks worth of profit. That's a big hit for any company. The only good news is that everyone else that still works there benefited from our original poster's actions. Hopefully this place will be a little safer and treat their employees a little better going forward. Entitled woman insists I call the store owner so she can get an additional 5% off her bag. This just happened today. I work in a miserable small retail store in a high-end mall. We carry many brands of bags. We'll call one brand T. Mind you, in this mall, there's also the main store for the brand T, where they carry more products from that brand. There are competitions since they're the main store. On Sundays, we close at 6 p.m. This loud woman and her husband walk in at 5.50. Guess who's going to be home late again? She grabs a backpack. How much is this tea backpack? I want to buy it for my husband. Well, it's usually this price. However, the store's offering a small 10% discount because of Mother's Day. Only 10% off? That's it? Well, the store tea is offering more than that. They're doing a 15% off. That's not possible since we carry the exact same brand and have the same prices. Plus, the brand notifies us whenever there's a sale. It's at this point that she changes her story. Actually, no, not tea store. I saw this exact same backpack in another store downtown. The lady offered me 15% off. What store was it? Downtown! Okay, maybe it's a different model. I scan the bag and add our 10% discount. Okay, so it would be this price plus tax. You're not gonna give me a discount? Sorry, the discount offered is 10%. But the lady downtown offered me a 15% off. Can't you call the owner so we can give me an additional 5%? Call him, because the customer is always right. Calling the owner is a no, since he hates to be called over things we already know. I can't call the owner. He let us know yesterday that we're only allowed to give a 10% discount maximum on any store item. No more than that. But the woman downtown showed me in her screen that the system lets her give a 15%. Can't you do that? You're right. I can put in whatever discount I want in the system. I can put in 15 or even a 20. But the owner strictly said 10% only. T-Store isn't even doing any discount at all. Well, the owner should offer more than that. I chose not to respond to her at this point to avoid escalating the situation. Her husband then tells me it's fine and that he'll pay for the bag. He hands me his card and then he politely asks me to monogram the bag. I monogram it and the loud woman just pulls out her phone and tries to find the bag cheaper. I assumed, however, that she didn't find anything. The husband is happy with his bag and thanks me. They both exit the store. I ended up leaving at 6.30. However, we're commissioned and it was an expensive bag he purchased, so it's okay. Yeah, I promise you, the owner does not want to be receiving that call. He'll just tell that customer to shove it. You think the rules don't apply to you? I'm sorry, that's not the case. You think the owner's going to give you an additional 5% because you asked? They don't care. They're the owner. They can do whatever they want. They're the one that's allowed to tell you to screw off. At least it worked out for our original poster that they got a little something extra for their trouble. I snapped when I found out that another guy saw my girlfriend naked. I'm a 25-year-old male. My girlfriend, Lydia, is 23. She lives with a roommate who has a boyfriend, Jeff. We gathered at their place last Friday for pizza. After a while, Jeff asks Lydia if she's still scared of being here alone the nights the roommate goes over to his place and I can't come. Lydia's always had trouble with being alone at night, and most nights I stay on FaceTime with her till she falls asleep so she feels safer. The roommate laughs and says that if she 
hears a noise in the bathroom, at least it'll be a ghost and not her locked in passed out. Lydia just mouths to me that she'll explain later. When we get to Lydia's room, I ask her to explain, and she tells me that this afternoon she wasn't feeling good and ended up fainting in the shower. So Jeff had to break the door to get in and help her. She said that she already felt better and didn't want to tell me because I was going to be worried about nothing. I said that it wasn't nothing if she had fainted, and that I should be aware of these things to help her. She said that now it would just be a funny story about how Jeff broke the door and roommate had to cover her with a towel so they could come to the rescue of her naked body. In that moment, I saw red. I asked if Jeff had seen her naked, and she said she couldn't be sure since she was unconscious, but roommate said that he stood out of the bathroom until she was covered. I asked if Lydia thought it was fair for me to not know that another guy had seen her naked, and she said he didn't actually see her naked and that it shouldn't matter since he was only helping. I shouted that she just said that she was unconscious and couldn't know if he saw her. She told me to be quiet or that they would hear me. And I shouted that I didn't care, that a man just saw my girlfriend's body and I had a right to be mad. Jeff and the roommate come in then and explain that he never saw anything. He just broke the lock and waited outside until roommate gave him the clear. I said that I didn't believe him. And roommate jumped to his defense saying that she was right there, making sure the situation wasn't embarrassing so they could take proper care of Lydia without her feeling weird. I shouted that I didn't care. I didn't like the idea of Jeff thinking about my girlfriend naked. Jeff then shouted at me, saying that I should respect his girlfriend and mine, who'd spent a whole day saying that she was fine but still looked a bit pale. He said that he only did it because he cared about Lydia, and that I was a jerk who didn't deserve any type of help. Hearing him say he cared about her was it for me. I left without as much as looking at Lydia as she begged me not to go. Over the weekend, Lydia had to be admitted to the hospital as she didn't feel good again, and Jeff and roommate prohibited me from seeing her, saying that I didn't deserve her. Obviously, the whole hospital thing sucks, and I wish I was there for her, but I still think I was right. At this point, I I'm not mad at Lydia anymore, just at Jeff. Am I the jerk? This is an incredibly misogynistic move. While I totally understand why you wouldn't want another guy to see your girlfriend naked, this is a different story. It was an emergency situation and he didn't even see her. You're literally freaking out over something that didn't happen. Giving your girlfriend who's clearly not doing well a hard time over this and saying at the end that you're not mad at her anymore, what was there to be mad at her for? For fainting? For needing help? You understand understand how you're immediately the jerk when it's broken down like this, right? Like, if she's in serious need of help and there's no one else around, what is Jeff supposed to do? Just leave her there until someone else comes along? No, of course he's going to do whatever he has to do to help her. I will say that them not letting you see her in the hospital might be a bit of a step too far, but I agree with them that she needs to get rid of you as soon as possible. I ruined our neighbor's kids' dreams of becoming a YouTube star. I've just started running an online D&D game. Last couple of sessions, I noticed my connection was really bad. The usual stuff didn't help. After a while, I found out that a couple months ago, my neighbor had borrowed the Wi-Fi password from my girlfriend because they were having connection problems. It was supposed to be for a day or two while their new ISP connected them. Saturday before last, I changed the Wi-Fi password. The connection is a lot better. On Sunday, the neighbor's wife turns up. Is something wrong with the internet? I can't log on. I changed the password. Oh, can I have the new one? No, you were only supposed to borrow it for a few days while you got your own connection, and I couldn't get a connection when I needed to. There's a short discussion that boils down to, oh, we didn't think you'd mind. I didn't if it was for a few days. It's been about three months. But you have it anyway. Yes, because I pay for it. And when you use it, you're taking something I pay for and making it worse for me and my household. That evening, my girlfriend mentions that she'd gotten a text from our neighbors and they said they were having problems with their internet again, and she'd lent them the new password. So I had another chat with the neighbors, which boiled down to something like this. But we need the internet. Sammy, the daughter, needs it for school, and Kev, the husband, loves his games. Then get your own connection. I did, but they can't get out till Wednesday. So just two more days then. 
I'm going to change the password again on Wednesday. If you must. Me being me, I forget on Wednesday. I don't remember until game night comes around and I notice the connection is a bit dodgy when I'm setting up. I change the password again and everything clears up. The next day, I get a 10 minute lecture from the husband that I should stop harassing him by cutting off his internet in the middle of playing his games. That I'm ruining his daughter's life by stopping her from studying. And that I need to give them the new password so his daughter could load new videos to her YouTube channel. I walk away, close my door, and enjoy a beer. Monday comes around. A note is glued, yes, glued, not taped, to my door. I'm not sure which of them wrote it, but here's what it said. I hope you're happy, jerk. You ruined my girl's hopes. You've no right to cut off my internet. You stopped my daughter from streaming and ruined her chance of becoming a YouTuber. Hope you're effing happy, jerk. Wow. You want to talk about a sense of entitlement? How about thinking that you own someone else's internet connection? That's a little insane. Maybe these people just don't understand how the internet works. It's not something that you have a right to, although that is a whole other conversation. Your neighbor pays for it. You don't have one of your own. It's not their problem. They were nice enough to let you use it for a little while. Why don't you just call that a win? If internet is clearly so important to you, then get your own. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.